So we we actually want to dissect this whole idea of passing gas. Yeah. What is the anatomy of a fart? Like, what are we expelling? Yeah, from mouth to butt, right? So it starts yes. with ingestion and digestion, and then over to absorption, and then over to expelation or out the butt. Yeah. Uh, so ingestion, of course, we eat food. Yeah. We masticate in the mouth. We mm -hmm. break it down, and then it enters our digestive system, where there's a lot of enzymes. Right. Uh, there's enzymes that digest uh, amylase, which digests carbohydrates, lipases yeah. that break down fats, and proteases for proteins. Okay. But these enzymes don't break down everything, particularly fiber. We're going to dive deep into what mm. kind of fiber. And then the fermentation, we're like fermenters, like beer fermenters. Our so, bodies do this naturally. Right. And yeah. so there's the absorption of micronutrients, but then what's left over, the bacteria have their way. They got to eat too. Right. They emanate carbon dioxide, methane, hydrogen. Mm. Some of us more than others, by the way. And there's some <laughs> solutions and remedies around that. Yeah. Uh, and then where does it all go? I mean, you know, including, by the way, consuming uh, carbohydrate uh, drinks. Yes. Where does it all go? It's got to go somewhere. Can you imagine? Like one or two sips of this. Uh, you know any pop for that matter and, that's and this what is what's going to build up like you know yes. many many you know so it's got to go somewhere right uh, so out the butt so <clears throat> that's the anatomy of a fart so uh, what does passing gas say about our overall health is right. it is it a commentary on how we're doing so, on he, the so here's the deal the average person should fart mm -hmm. between 10 and 20 times a day Okay. Too much, and there's probably some fermentation or excess fermentation going on. Yeah. Too little, you might not have the motility, the necessary fiber, or even hydration that you should have. So you should so, be fart. <clears throat> you should be passing gas. My mother always told me that. She's like, "Do you want to end up in the hospital? Pass the gas." Right. Some, often you it's have a signal. To let it go. Often it's a signal. When motility gets a, it's plays a role. It's a signal like, "Hey, go to the washroom, do the poop." That's right. another segment. Right. But when you're when you're passing gas 10, 20 times a day, some of it's in your sleep. Some yes. of it you're silently tooting, and some of it you're with Marilyn on a fart walk. But <laughs> at the end of the day, you really need to get that passed. Right. If you're passing too much, mm -hmm. I want to talk to folks about the FODMAP. <clears throat> yeah. So Let's we hear food. about gluten, or refined carbohydrates, cakes, cookies, pastas, breads, and so forth being bad for us. Here's yeah. a theory. It's probably maybe less of the gluten for most folks, more of what we call FODMAP. It's an acronym that stands for fermentable, that's the key, uh -huh. oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. These are types of carbohydrate chains, sugars, in fact, that some people are very sensitive to, very found in uh, heavily in gluten-containing refined foods, but also in beans. Mm -hmm. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot, the more you toot, mm -hmm. the more you feel. Sweet beans with every meal, but not for everybody. Right. Right. Uh, Carbohydrated. So, are you saying <clears throat> ease up on foods I'm that are FODMAP? I'm saying try this routine of reducing FODMAP in your diet if you're okay. farting excessively beyond 20 times a day. So you better start counting. Right. You start what counting. He's so beans. Oh, I got to 30. Time to start easing those foods. Right. Exactly. Right? Lactose. We've heard of lactose. Obviously, a lot of people know they're sensitive. 54 percent of the population is ice cream, milk, oh, dairy, you know, cheese. Yeah. But just taking a lactose pill or mm -hmm. lactate, not the solution, avoidance. It's FODMAP heavy. Got it. Lastly, this is beautiful, right? Fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Cruciferous, by the way, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, cabbage, mustard greens. It's going to mm -hmm. cause excess sulfur. Those are going to smell more, just like egg farts. Yes. Okay, but that bes besides the fact that they smell more, yeah. these groupings here, pears, cauliflower, onions, garlic, mm -hmm. they're part of the FODMAP. They have excessive mm. amounts of these carbohydrates that excessive farters have problems with. So reducing these, by the way, it's more than just farting a lot. It's probably indicative of IBS or problems with the gut or yes. microbiome imbalance. You heard of SIBO, yeah. small intestinal yeah. bacterial overgrowth? Those bad bacteria overgrow and causes problems, health problems, because we're eating too much of these foods, some of which are otherwise healthy. Got it becomes it. excess farters. So you might even have to ease off on <clears throat> healthy foods. Uh, you got it. You've got a drink that would help. Right. This is not just amazing for your bacteria, yeah. the good stuff, by the way, feeds the good stuff, okay. but it actually might be a colon deodorizer. Oh, right? so the farts so come out farts smelling are, like roses. I mean, I'm not promising minty farts. Okay. What I'm saying is you're probably going to farting under control. So here's how to make it. Yeah. You're going to steep with two tea bags of peppermint tea, mm -hmm. eight ounce of, of a glass tummy. of water. This is uh, cooled down. Then you're mm -hmm. going to add one ounce of chlorophyll. Okay. Okay. Not too much. That's probably more than an ounce. Sorry yep. about that. Then you're adding. You don't want the fiber. That's that gloppy, gloopy mess. Oh, thank goodness! I thought you were going to put that stuff. in there. No, 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 that, that's, you don't want that. That's okay. not FODMAP friendly. What you want is a teaspoon. By the way, there's already five grams in here. Okay. Tasteless, uh, odorless, soluble. One teaspoon of that kind of fiber. Yeah. Into this, yeah. okay. So you basically mix that in after you mix that around. Tasteless, odorless, etc. Okay. Uh, very. You can cook with it, by the way, as well. But we're mixing it into this, and then uh, and then you want some activated charcoal. What does that do? So act <clears throat> activated charcoal is actually going to absorb 
uh -huh. all of the smell and odor. Oh. And yes, you are going to try this. So I don't knew it. it. Just be careful. That's why I was hoping you this, weren't going to put that this in it. This can turn, and be I careful, gag. it can turn your stool black. Oh, awesome. But it doesn't taste so bad. I mean, uh, mm. what do you think? It's fine as black. No, not at all. Nothing no, to... it's actually, it tastes fine. I have chlorophyll every morning, so I'm used to that Chlorophyll flavor. to absorb the yeah, odor. Fine. Peppermint to manage peristalsis. Yeah. Charcoal to absorb. And then the good fiber soluble. Look, please, for FODMAP soluble fiber yeah. to feed the good bacteria. Really good. Fart okay, less, and I folks. like that you made us a drink.